All right, so day one. Our objective today is readers think across nonfiction text to construct knowledge of a topic and to confirm accuracy of a topic. Basically what that's saying is that there are multiple books on the same topic, right? Yeah, like if you were to think of Abraham Lincoln. There are lots of different books on Abraham Lincoln. There's not just one book. Now, do you think the one book that you read about Abraham Lincoln has everything you will ever need to know about the guy? What do you think? Yeah. See a lot of heads shaking no, and that's right. Because if a book is about Abraham Lincoln, it probably doesn't have every part of his life or every part of him in that book. He lived a long life. That would be one ginormous book if it covered everything about him, okay? Some books cover Abraham Lincoln's childhood. Some cover just his presidency. Some cover the parts before his presidency. Some cover his quotes and things he said, while others will cover his policies. So there's all kinds of different books that are focusing on different parts of his life. That's the same thing with all kinds of different nonfiction books. That's just one example. Okay, so like if you were to read about um, tectonic plates and earthquakes, some books will talk about certain parts of that and others will go into even deeper detail about it. Some will give you the history of earthquakes and all kinds of different things. So it's always important to read multiple texts and that's what we're gonna go into today. Brecken, then Amelia. Really? Very cool. So um, that book probably covered a lot about him, but there will be certain parts that you'll still can find in other books. Um, so I'm reading a book about George Washington called Fort Street Therapy. Mm -hmm. times when you read those biographies, they cover certain parts. And we talked about that in biographies, right? Certain biographies start right from the beginning. They were born on this day, in this hospital, you know, that sort of thing. And then other biographies will start right at the part where they start to do something significant, right? So there's different starting points. So I want you to discuss with somebody nearby you. With the student next to you, discuss why you think it is important to read multiple sources of information about a topic. So we just talked about some examples. Why do you think it's important to do that? Why should you look up multiple sources? It's just like what you did in your persuasive essay. You had to find multiple sources, multiple facts. Why is that important? Go ahead and discuss with somebody nearby. That's a really important because you can get a uh, view from all sides. Up, down, left, right. Okay, we'll go ahead and stop there. So, what do you think, really quickly, before we go to the next slide? Kate? I like that. It's a good answer. Brecken? Yup, I like that too. Marcos? Some books, for example, will say that George Washington sat down in theory, others will say that he did not. Yeah, I like that too, because sometimes, so we have different things, right? Brecken is talking about perspective in books. It's important to find different perspectives. Kate is talking about 
getting a full understanding, right? Because not everything's gonna give you all the information. So getting a full understanding on topic. And Marcos is talking about verifying. Is what you just read true or not? Sometimes when you read older books, they need to be updated. Like you can't just update a book, right? You can't just sit down, press a button, boop, it's now updated. Instead, it stays, it stays the way it always has been. No matter how many years go by, that book will, will remain text-wise exactly the same. So sometimes facts change, right? Or what we thought was true changes. And actually we discover it's not true, like Earth is flat, that sort of stuff. So it's important to verify your information too. And I like the example that Marcos gave with George Washington chopping down a cherry tree. We know that's not really true. So you wanna double check your facts with that. Good. All right, so here's our activity. We're gonna go, we're going to read two different texts about Malala. And as I read, think about what you learned and compare what you learned from each text about Malala. We will share our thoughts at the end and put it in a chart. So be ready to share. So here's the first one. And I think we have, it's a brave girl from Afghanistan. Yeah. If you're wondering what it says, this is in Spanish, by the way. Um, so here's some text from page 13 about Malala. So on Malala's 16th birthday, the four world leaders, she speaks out again, stronger than before. They thought that bullets would silence us, but they failed. One child, one teacher, one book, one pen can change the world. The world hears the voice of this brave girl from Pakistan and listens. So that's from that book. Malala, a brave girl from Pakistan. And then here's another book, Malala the Brave, about the same person. Here's page 14 of this book. It says, in July 2013, Malala gave a speech at the United Nations, less than a year after, she, after the attack. She called for children around the world to be permitted to get an education. Later that year, Malala received Europe's top human rights award for her dedication to freedom of thought and human rights. She has met with President Obama, the Queen of England, and other world figures. So this is from 2013, so you know the world figures are changing. Yeah, you might say, wait, what? I thought our president was. It changed, right? So 2013. Okay, so thinking about information, what did we get from the first book and what did we get from the second book? We're gonna make a chart here. And I want you to think about how is the information similar and what new information do we gain from each book? So what did we get from the first book? Anyone remember from that page 13? What did we get? What information did they tell us? Daniel? Okay, it did mention her 16th birthday. What else did it? Mention. They mentioned that she yelled from a mountain, I think it was. Mm, not from a mountain. Not from a mountain. London? That was in the second book. I'll write that down. So 2013 gave a speech. That was July. I'm gonna put UN, UN means United Nations, okay? So she gave a speech. Bracken? And silence us, I think is what they use, but yeah, stop us, that sort of idea. So they gave direct quotes, didn't they? So I'm gonna write that down. Gave direct quotes. Anything else? Amelia?
got an award. Yes, that would be the second one. It mentioned she got a human rights award for in Europe. So you want to write that down for the second one then? Okay. So human rights award. Anything else you want to add? I'll leave it open to both stories. So whichever one you want to add to. You reckon? All right, so I'm going to say I'm just going to keep it simple and say met world leaders. Okay, so people who were leading countries and other icons too. Okay, anything else? Okay, we'll stop there. So. Then here's my question. This is actually two questions. How is the information similar? And what new information do we gain from each book? So let's start with how the information is similar. So what are the similarities here between these two books? London? Yes, that's really probably the biggest similarity. In both, they're talking about her big speech, okay? That she gave a big speech in front of world leaders, right? So anything else that's similar between the two? It doesn't have to be exact words, but maybe the same idea. Daniel? They're both about Malala. Exactly. They're both about the person Malala. Anything else? Okay, they talk about her bravery in both books. Good. Um, what new information do we gain from each book? Because we get things from one book that we don't get from the other. So what information are we gaining from reading both of these books? Zoe? Okay, so in this one, Zoe's saying we talk about the things that she received for what she did, right? She got a human rights award, she met world leaders. In this one, it's talking about what she did. Okay, I could see that. What else, Amelia? How old she was. Yeah, how old she was. In this one, we talked about she was 16, so we're on her 16th birthday. This one, it just says in July 2013. Okay, so it doesn't really say anything about her birthday. How old is she? What else? What else do we gain? What other information do we gain? Marshall? We gain information that that she will gain us in her own life, in her own life. Okay, I guess we can get that from both, right? That's kind of more implied. Yeah, more implied, you're right. New information we gain from each book. So like, what do you think? Like, what am I getting from one book that I'm not getting from the other? Kate? Um, in the first book, it said, um, she got this education. Yeah, just a paper, one pen, what? One student, one pen, one teacher, something like that can change the world. It was something along those lines, right? That was a direct quote. Did we get any direct quotes from this one? No. no. So in this one, we don't really get to hear Malala herself or with her own words. In this book, we hear her from her own words, what she said. So that's a big difference, right? In this one, we're gaining information about her and what she's actually saying. In this one, they, it's somebody else kind of talking about her, right? Somebody else writing about her. So I think that's a big difference. We gain information there. What else do we gain? Anything else you want to add? Zoe? I saw your ass. Yeah. I told 
So do you see how when we read those two different Malala uh, descriptions of her speech, we got information from one that we would have never got from the other one. If we had just read one book, we would have had an incomplete understanding. We wouldn't have had a full understanding of what actually happened. But by reading multiple sources, you get a stronger understanding. It's just like with your persuasive essays. The more websites you looked up, the more facts you gathered, the more stronger of an understanding you had about your argument, and you could write more, and hopefully write a more convincing argument for Mr. Reed, right? So that's something that we get from reading multiple sources. All right, so we'll go ahead and stop there. So what I'd like you guys to do today